pandemic is causing a major medical dilemma all over the world. And our country, South Africa, is not immune to this. This pandemic is leaving in its path the trail of economic destruction and hardship and financial ruin to most businesses and families alike. Hello and welcome to you wherever you're listening from. We come this privilege to greet you on behalf of the name that is above every other name, the name Jesus Christ himself. For a short while allow me to encourage you through a verse in the Bible that during this hard times, the economic struggles that most Christians take comfort from. And this is recorded for, record for us in Jer Jeremiah's Gospel, the 29th chapter and verse 11. Allow me to read. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Who of us don't want to know what the plans of our lives are? Take your circular employment as an example, you being the planner in this uh, massive uh, conglomerate or, or company, and your job is to uh, task is to basically lay out the plans for the current fiscal or financial year, and you so meticulous, meticulously do the plans, and then you present that to your board, knowing at the back of your mind you've taken every possible risks that could happen every possible outcome in your experience and you've planned all this within that to make sure you get the best possible results only to give this to the board for their approval and suddenly find that the major shareholders uh, in the pursuit of financial more financial gain uh, decides to change or alter the plans and ultimately when the plans do not work out the way you've proposed it should be you're the first to be blamed because uh, you did the plans but in retrospect, somebody else changed the plans that you've provided. Now God is saying, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and to give you a good life. And I'm sure if God had to lay out the plans for you right now, you would probably look at the timelines that God has for you and decide you want to change things uh, and, 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 and make things go a little faster for your comfort, for your pleasure and for your advantage. But that's not what God had in mind. And during the plan that he has for you, there are certain character traits that he probably wants to build, that he wants to announce, so that you come, you become the better you that God is as destined for you. Now, our, our, our verse that we've read, Jeremiah 29, 11, just to put that into context for you, the Bible tells us the Jews were living first under Egyptian turmoil, then they were living under uh, Babylonian uh, dominion and subsequently the Bible tells us they were exiled from Jerusalem into Babylon and living under the economic hardships uh, of the Babylonians. Uh, I want you to understand uh, and try to comprehend a picture being slaves uh, and, and, and being outcast in this society and taken advantage of uh, and, and you can understand the plight of this people. In the 28th chapter Jeremiah tells us that he pronounced judgment on a prophet called Ananiah. And Ananias had come into town or amongst the Jews. Uh, he had prophesied that God was going to break the yoke of the Babylonians uh, and within two years he was going to free the people. But this ultimately was a false notion or a false message that a false prophet was giving to the people. The Bible tells us that Jeremiah uh, pronounced judgment on, on Ananias and God removed him from the face of the earth. Uh, and the prophet Jeremiah tells the people in 29 11 that God says, I know the plans that I have for you, but he needed to put it into context for them. And he said to them, you will live under Babylonian rule for the next 70 years. And after that, oh, 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 you would get the freedom that you so desire. And he also encourages, encourages them, whilst you're living in the city, you need to build, uh, build houses, you need to marry, you need to uh, Continue life as you had known and, and God will prosper you whilst you're doing this. And today, allow me to address you, those that are listening from wherever in the world that you might be and facing such dilemma and such flights, uh, such economic hardships. Uh, it might not be as quick as you might want it to be, but I want you to understand that God has a plan for you. And if you allow him to bring the plan with an ease might uh, from the beginning to the end and all in between, uh, and he will prosper you. I want to pause and we want to consider 
two examples uh, this morning. And we, we, we read in Exodus about the story of Moses leading the children. And a, a, a prominent scholar made this beautiful statement when he said that Moses was trained in the palace to lead in the wilderness. Now, the story of uh, Moses was miraculous on its own. You remember the time when Moses was born, there was a decree, an ultimatum, that no male child was supposed to be uh, was supposed to live or survive. When he was born, he was supposed to be put to death. But his mother, when he was born, saw something in him. She hid him for three months, uh, set him on a float on the river Nile, and lo and behold, the fear of that time, uh, his daughter comes and picks this baby and takes this baby home. He was reared in, 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 in royalty. He was reared and brought up uh, in a family that ruled and at that time they were ruling uh, with suppression and oppression uh, the Israelite or the Jewish nation. Now Moses when he would have considered uh, all the benefits that he was getting in this country being in, in the palace and being raised up as probably one to, to, to rule and reign when the Pharaoh goes or, 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 or certainly a lot of the responsibilities would be given to him to govern this Egyptian nation. But God had a different plan for him. Although he was trained in the palace, he was bound to lead in the wilderness. Exodus would record, record for us uh, how he, he, he went and challenged the, the Jewish nation that God had raised him to be a leader amongst them. And the story goes and tells us how he took the people of Israel out of Egypt through the wilderness and yet he never saw the promised land. If Moses were to consider the writings of Jeremiah 29 11, I know the plans that I have for you. I'm sure within Moses' demeanor, within Moses' plan, he probably wanted to get and enjoy the benefits of a land that was flowing with milk and honey. But unknown to him and unfortunately for him, God had other plans. I know the plans that I have for you. And it is recorded or it is said that Moses has been one of the greatest leaders of of the Israelite nation. Now let's stop to consider Joseph. And this prominent scholar made the statement that Joseph was trained in the desert to lead in the palace. Now Joseph, Joseph had the plans that God had unfolded for him right at the inception, and when he looked at that he couldn't rule his own brothers because they were jealous of him. Every time he had a dream and explained the dream to him, they could not get over him, over his arrogance or pride or what he was going to do. And if God had laid out the plans for him right at the beginning, I'm sure with a certain amount of pride, indignation or whatever it might be, he would have gone and showed the brothers, look, this is what God told me. But God didn't reveal the plans right at the beginning for him. And imagine, I can imagine if, if, if Joseph had seen the plans uh, and, and, and knowing what was going to happen, uh, he probably would have said, let bygones be bygones. I know I'm going to get to where God wants me to be. But he didn't know the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning. He had to go through the pit. He had to go through the through prison. And yet he ended up in the palace. And I'm not saying for a moment that you will endure such hardships, that you are going to go through a pit and you're going to go through prison before you get to your palace. But what I'm saying to you right now is wherever you might find yourself in your current dilemma, in your current situation, in, in your current hardship, I want you to consider the verse that God has a promise for every one of us whether you believe in him or you don't, whether you call yourself a Christian, you don't. God has a plan for you. My friend, it rains upon the righteous and the unrighteous. The sun shines on the good and the bad. And I want for you to know whether you've not called upon the name of Jesus yet, but you have this all encompassing God that has a plan just for you as well. And he says, I have a plan to give you a good life. But my friend, it is up to us that we do not thwart the plans that God has for us. We do not fast track the plans that God has for us. We do not go and take out from the plans that God has for us. We do not add to the plans that God has for us. Let God be God and you be you and allow the plan that he has for you just to unfold in front of you. Might not be pretty at times, but at the end of the race, when all is said and done, when you look back, you would be great, grateful for the hand of God over your life. He says in Revelation, I am the beginning, 
I am the end. And if only you allow me to be your everything in between. The plans that I have for you, like I said to the Jewish nation recorded for us by Jeremiah, I have the same plans for you, plans to give you a good life. In John's Gospel, the Bible says, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you will be also. We are waiting the second return of Jesus. And whilst we wait, we're ambassadors here on this earth. As Jeremiah addressed the Jewish nation years ago, the same rings true for us today. Whilst we wait for this eternal home, we need to live here on this earth. Amidst all his hardships, amidst all its turmoil, which is passing through. And the same is true then as it is now. Build, live, marry. And whilst you're doing that, Jesus says, I know the plans that I have for you. Most often we quote Jeremiah 29, 11, but verses 12 and 13 is of paramount importance and is linked to verse 11. Allow me to read. Verse 12 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God knows your hardship. He knows your plight. He knows your, your pain. And he has a plan for you. Won't you trust him to lead, to guide, and to fulfill the plans that he has just for you? Perhaps today I'm addressing somebody that does not know Jesus. And you're wondering, if I don't have a relationship with Jesus, what about those plans? I'm, I'm going a why. I don't know what to do. But my friend, I want you to understand, if you give him your life today and allow him to lead and guide you, the same plans he has for you, my friends, to give you a better life. All you need to do, wherever you might be, say, Lord, forgive me for my indiscretions. Forgive me for my transgressions. And as the Bible would put it, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me. Today, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose from the grave and I firmly believe that you're coming back for me. And today, Lord, I'm saying I'm sorry. Forgive me and try me once again and let your plan unfold in my life. If that's you today, I'd like to pray for you wherever you might be. Just for a moment, if you can just bow your heads. Uh. Father, today we pray that you would help and you, you would bless us. We pray for those people, wherever they might be, Lord, uh, that are saying that they are sorry, Lord. Uh, that they're looking at the past and saying that they've, they've failed. Uh. Father, for the indiscretions, the transgressions and the sin, we're asking, oh Lord, that you would forgive them, that you would touch them. And Father, today, the plan that you have in Jeremiah 29, 11, for all those that would follow you, we ask, oh Lord, that you would include them in the plans that you have for them. So I pray that you would bless, that you would touch, and that you would forgive them now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you might be listening from, it's indeed been our privilege and pleasure to encourage you through God's word. We trust that these words would bring Comfort to your hearts, joy to your souls, and above all, that it will bring healing to your bodies. Thank you and God bless you.